Let's get into it. Soul Not For Sale podcast. Coach Colin here. Joe Rogan has for a long time been... I don't know, undecided, kind of sitting on the fence. Um, you know, I give him the benefit of the doubt. I think he's just trying to acquire more information when it comes to the Israel Gaza Palestine conflict, Hamas conflict. And he's finally kind of picked, I don't want to say pick the side, but he's definitely seen some things that have made him just come out as saying that Israel has committed genocide or is in the process on a small scale, he said, but he did kind of say that. And it's a very, I got two clips for you, two clips from Joe Rogan. Then I'm gonna be showing you some footage of Gaza because he asked Jamie to pull it up. Jamie doesn't pull it up. <laughs> um, then there is uh, California requesting a ceasefire in, in Gaza, which is, I don't know. I have no idea why they think that they have the ability to do that. That was another thing Joe asked to be pulled up. Jamie didn't pull it up. Don't know what's going on with Joe and Jamie. Then I'm going to be showing you the UN talking about a ceasefire as well and how Israel reacted to that. And then I'm going to be showing you Tim Kennedy talking about war. So we're just covering all angles. Let's just check it out. I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that Joe Rogan would come out and say that. A lot of people are afraid to address what's going on. A lot of people are afraid. And I thought Joe, with how big his platform is, would be one of those people. But he's decided um, to kind of pick a side. You know, I don't want to say that for him, but it sounds like it, definitely. Don't forget about IamCoachColin.com. We got Soul Not For Sale stuff. We got Cancel Hollywood, newest design. Stop worship, wor worshiping celebrities. And uh, Public Enemy number one. A discount code is IamCoachColin. All capital letters, all one word. One L in the name Colin. Let's start with the first clip. TV deals and whatnot. Yeah. Mm, right, right, right. I that, killed three men for my people TV. try to get when they get aggressive? Those are the first, those and laptops are like the first big things. You oh, Black, Black Friday sales on. are some of the darkest moments in humanity. You see those people fighting over like, boxes of shit like what the fuck i think people? i'm looking at the greatest country on earth frankly joe <laughs> that's what i think i'm looking at on black Com friday competition on african-american friday excuse me <laughs> excuse me joe <laughs> when you say uh these guys are getting uh in trouble on tiktok like i don't i'm not on tiktok so like of what's, course not you're not a pedophile they, so what specifically are they putting up on tiktok that's getting you them know in showing off uh, like blowing shit up into I, I don't look at it i i i don't want to uh go on tiktok for any reason <laughs> i don't care about anything on it uh, but we have the on Jimmy Show. Jimmy Show, we show clips. You know, like the clip of Wolf Blitzer. You ever see that clip of Wolf Blitzer, where he has the the uh, I don't know what rank the guy is. This is in the early part of the war, and the guy's English is not usually have pretty good English, but his isn't great, right? And Wolf, who used to work for APAC, okay, Wolf's not a pro on the side of everything, dude, right? And he goes, so they just blew up some some uh, refugee camp, and to get this one guy, to get this one Hamas, and Wolf's like, wait, you dropped blew up for. There's 400, 500 people at that camp. And you're like, hey, that's war. And like Wolf's face, he's just like, are we going to really? go to, yeah, oh, wait, I forgot the best part. I don't want to say best part, but on Wolf's face, and you could see Wolf is like, what in the fuck? This is what I'm talking about. And he goes, uh, well, did you get the guy? He goes, oh, we, we can't confirm. <laughs> they might have not even got the guy. Well, if and they Wolf say goes, they can't confirm, they probably didn't get him. Of course. And Wolf, so Wolf knows that. So Wolf, he's like, uh, we have to go to a break. <laughs> that's the... That sticks oh, with me. I need me. to watch that. I need to watch that. I, I, yeah, I, I was trying to find it. I have the episode, the the clip from. So Jimmy is this Show one of those ones that's going to get us in trouble? I don't. I, we can't do it. Probably right. No idea. Why, why, oh, well, let's play it just for us. I don't. I have to even find it. I don't know. It's, it's, oh yeah. Chance this is this it? This is it. This is it. Okay. Let me hear it. Jane. Back now to our breaking news here in the Middle East: a massive explosion at the largest refugee camp in Gaza. Joining us now is Lieutenant Colonel Richard Heck. He's the international spokesperson for the Israel Defense Forces. Thanks so much for joining us. I, I want to ask you first about this massive blast that we all just saw. We saw the video at the Jabalia refugee camp in Gaza. Is there anything more you could first of all tell us about how this explosion happened? Hi, Wolf. Thanks for having me. So we'll be coming out in the next, hopefully, hour with more data. But I can update you now that- Hold on, pause. Senior... This is a Scottish Israeli dude? Like, what is yeah. this? That's, Possibly. That accent's crazy. Do you know Australian and Israeli? <laughs> I know, but the accent with the flag, I'm like, my brain is going, what's going on here? It's I thought he had like a cleft palate for a minute. <laughs> We've got bombs there. Okay, go ahead. Hamas commander in that area. Uh, sadly, he was hiding, again, as they do, behind uh, within civilians. And that's all I can see at this point. We're looking into it, and we'll be coming out with more data as we learn what happened there. Oh, it is Scottish. So yeah. can you confirm it was an Israeli attack? that uh, destroyed a big chunk of that Jabalia refugee camp? Yes, I can. 
We went, we were focused again on our target. Here's where Wolf gets upset. Yeah. Senior Commander Wolf. And we'll be updating uh, you with more data as the hour moves ahead. But even if that uh, uh, Hamas commander was there amidst all those Palestinian refugees who are in that, in that Jabalia refugee camp, Israel still went ahead and, and dropped a bomb there, uh, attempting to kill this Hamas, uh, this Hamas, Hamas commander, knowing that a lot of innocent civilians, men, women, and children, presumably would be killed. Is that what I'm hearing? That's not what you're hearing, Wolf. We, again, were focused on this commander. Again, who, you'll get more data who this man was. Uh, killed many, many Israelis. Uh, we're doing everything we can. These are, it's a very complicated battle space. There could be infrastructure there. There could be tunnels there. Uh, we're still looking into it, and we'll give you more data as the hour moves ahead. But you know that there are a lot of refugees, a lot of innocent civilians, men, women, and children in that refugee camp as well, right? This is the tragedy of war, Wolf. I mean, we, as you know, we've been saying for days, move south. Civilians that are not involved with Hamas, please move south. Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to get a little we, bit more information. Uh, you knew there were civilians there. You knew there were refugees, all sorts of refugees. But you decided to still drop a bomb on that refugee camp attempting to kill the Hamas commander. By the way, was he killed? I can't confirm yet. <laughs> uh, updated. He, yes, we know that he was killed. He said he was killed. Um, about the civilians there, we're doing everything we can to minimize. Uh, I'll, tell, I'll say it again. Sadly, they are hiding themselves within civilian population okay. again we are doing this stage okay. by stage. Because, you, it's okay to shoot through all the people it's sad that there's people that's normal and that's just war putin by the way is the most <sighs> evil man in the world for nothing as fucked up as that no so look hey they do have to do isn't it crazy though when you see the difference between people all right so we're gonna move on to the next clip but um yeah that's very interesting now <laughs> it, they're very honest about it that's what's very odd to me. You would think if you did something like that, you'd at least be like, we're not taking any questions. You know, you don't think you'd be like, yeah, sure. You want to talk? You want to talk? We can break it down for you. It's interesting how honest they are about this whole thing, because you don't have to talk to CNN. You don't have to do that. You can easily just say, we're not talking to anybody at this time until we clarify the situation completely. You can easily say that. Because that didn't make that attack look any better. That gentleman didn't make things seem good at all. In fact, you could argue he made it seem worse because he was very nonchalant about it. I feel like the best thing with that situation, well, the best thing would be not to do it. You know, I really, and we'll talk about this near the end, I don't understand why it's like if you got an army and you got the Mossad, and the Mossad is incredible at finding people and intelligence and gathering it. And they can easily have the CIA help them. Why can't they find that guy, whoever they're talking about, and then send the soldiers in, a team, a special force team, the best of the best, and just take the guy out? Grab the guy. I, I don't, I really, I can't understand why that can't happen. And especially because it's in a refugee camp. So it's not like it's a it's not like it's a town and you don't know what's what. It's a refugee camp. You know? I don't it's very interesting to me that he would be so honest. Here, let's move on to the next clip. It's mind boggling to me how he just sat there and he was just like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't you say nothing? Have you learned nothing from the rest of the world when they're engaged in war? You ever see Putin sit down and do these interviews? Yeah, we did this. And he doesn't say anything. I don't know. He definitely doesn't say anything to CNN. That's for sure. Jeez. All right. Let's get into the next clip here. Yeah. And that's the moment when I knew right there. It was like, oh, you're like that ADL piece of shit was shocked. Well, you're not going to back us up all the way on this thing. We followed you on all your crazy shit. What? You, ADL thing with who? The guy from the ADL was furious on October 7th when they went on Warpath because the Wokies weren't supporting Israel. He, the ADL supported that like that kind of bullshit we just watched right. they supported that right they supported blm right so now this is how you repay us by not going along with everything we're doing yeah so that's why i'm saying woke died on that day it should have been dead a long time ago yeah it's, because, it's yeah. people understand that it's just crazy now it's the just, it's just yeah. tribal it's very tribal and it's very it's like even in the right like look what's going on with candace owens and ben I, shapiro dude. like what did she say i want to know what was she, what she was fired for 
Because was it criticism of Israel? Was it, I mean, did she show that Edward Snowden video that he put up on Twitter that shows them oh, maybe. drone bombing those kids that are, those men, I should say, unarmed people that were walking towards the rubble that yeah. clearly weren't causing yeah. any danger to anybody? Yeah, they right. just bombed them? Yeah, no, it's your duty. It's just like for Biden or whoever you like, you're supposed to cover up for them. Because but the whole thing yeah. is like they're always saying they're only targeting Hamas and everybody else is a casualty. Well, if those guys are just unarmed civilians and they're walking alone, that's what they appear to be. Dresden. And you just blast them from the sky with robots. This is the tragedy of war. Yeah, this is insane. And no one knows what to think now because if you can't talk about that, if you can't say that's real, then you're saying that genocide is okay as long as we're doing it. And that is what we're saying. And if you're saying that from a perspective of someone who literally went through the Holocaust or your, your people, your tribe went through the fucking Holocaust and now you're willing to do it. I hope the irony is not lost on you. It, it, it's so nuts. It's so hard to imagine that someone where a, cu a culture like a country was like officially founded in what? 47, 48, 48. Okay. Officially founded. So that's so recent <laughs> and you and you guys are willing to do what was done to you that led you to believe that you needed to start your own country. You're yeah. willing to do that at least on a small scale in Gaza. Like there's nothing left. If you see the videos, let's see, let's see some recent footage of Gaza because they have they stopped bombing. I know people are calling for ceasefires. Well, you know, I, you know, what I think is going to help. In San Francisco, the city council all got together with masks on, and they voted on a ceasefire. And uh, then they <laughs> all they danced. Yes, they won. The ceasefire passed. The ceasefire passed, which is really important. And uh, <laughs> when it job, passed, guys. they were all these fucking freaks with blue hair all dancing around with masks on. Please show that, because it's one of the most wonderful things on the internet. These people are swimming in a sea of human shit with needles flying by like logs on a raging river. With the wrong kind of mask on. Everyone's in a tent. Robberies are out of control. The fucking stores have all moved out of your town. And what'd you vote on? <laughs> you vote me. on a ceasefire in Gaza. You gotta see it though. You gotta see it. Watch. Let's. I gotta find it. I okay. It's so preposterous. It must be readily available. Unless the Google is trying to hide the truth. You know what it reminds me of? Trying to hide the truth. It's interesting. You know, Jamie's just like, I don't know. I, I can't find it. Usually, Jamie's just like, before Joe even finishes talking with what he's talking about. Jamie has it pulled up already. Something's something's going on. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But there there's something happening. Now, when it comes to the video he's talking about, about these people who are getting blown up, I cannot I, I love to show you guys context on this whole thing. Anytime I show you guys a clip, that's something I cannot show you. <sighs> but it's exactly what it sounds like. It's uh it's not even gory because war is not as gory as people think. A lot of times when someone gets blown up, they're just gone. And that's what happened to these people. It's just like, boom, there's a hit. People are gone. There's one guy crawling and then hit again and he's gone. That's it. It's just, that's it. And that's the video that triggered a lot of different people. And that's the video that apparently triggered Joe Rogan as well. Because, again, these guys didn't seem like they were going anywhere to the naked eye, to the naked, uninformed eye, it didn't seem like they were going anywhere. It seemed like they were just regular people. Uh, a lot of people were saying they were kids. They weren't exactly kids, but they were probably young. A lot of Gaza's population is young. So there's that. Um, and then the Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro thing. Jamie also didn't pull that up within this podcast because I've watched this already. I'm like on my second listen. And Joe Rogan asks twice for Jamie to pull up Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro, the whole beef and what happened, and he doesn't pull it up. It's very interesting. Very interesting. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't do it. But I can tell you what happened between them was uh, Candace Owens had an America First attitude towards what was going on in Israel. I'm going to show you what Gaza looks like right now because that I can show you, and it is, uh, you know, rather disturbing. But it's very dystopian. I mean, uh, Candace Owens had an America first attitude towards the whole conflict. Ben Shapiro right away felt like America should be, you know, really gung ho on just supporting Israel. Candace Owens, like Tucker Carlson, they actually sat down and talked about it, felt like, hey, that's not something that needs to happen. There's many things here that need to be taken care of first. Ben Shapiro was pissed. He started attacking Candace Owens via Twitter. Um, very small man, in my opinion, that's a pregnant woman. You're just going at her, you know, like you're just letting your feelings just get way ahead of you. It was kind of gross to see, uh, you know, it wasn't too bad. Candace Owens can handle herself. It's no problem, but it was just gross to see. Like I, just as a dude, it's like, I don't know. 
If a pregnant lady's yelling at me, I say, okay, relax, relax, you're pregnant, please just calm down. That's what I do, you know? Um, <laughs> that's what I've done for the past nine months, <laughs> 10 months, while my wife was uh, in that way. <laughs> you know, it's all right, honey, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Um, you know, but uh, that's what happened between them. Let's get into this Gaza footage really quick. Just a quick video of what it actually looks like. It's uh, It's not good. And again, when I see this, I'm just like, man, you guys should be able to find those people without this happening. You know, I'm not taking an anti-Semitic stance. I'm not taking whatever these BLM people are taking, like, you know, how they are full, they're gung-ho, like pros Hamas, like that. I think that's insane. But I don't think if Hamas is a terrorist organization, I don't know that the place that they're in should be looking like this when there's so many civilians, man. It's just crazy. I'm going to turn that music off, but you can see what's going on here. These are buildings, you know, uh, where the rubble is between the buildings. That was a road. This just, it, lo it looks almost like pre-construction. Just looks wild. You know? Jeez. Here, uh, there, there's stuff that's popping up here. I'll, I'll replay it. Drone footage. Drone footage showed widespread damage in Gaza following Israel strikes. Here, I'll move. I will move myself. I don't do it often here. So you guys can see this. So Israel launched uh, airstrikes following the largest ass assault on the Palestinian militants in years. On Saturday, Hamas militants carried out a coordinated assault on Israel by land, air, and sea. Now this is October 10th. This was posted. Uh, authorities in Israel said more than 900 Israelis were confirmed dead. Just to give you a little context into... I can't really say this is why it's happening. There's been a whole lot of things going on for decades, but you know, some would say thousands of years. More than 700 Palestinians were killed, according to Gaza's health ministry. But this place just looks just dystopian, just taken down. Like this is wild to see. Absolutely wild. So that's that's that. That's that's what's going on there. It's very, very hard to see, but that is how war goes at times. But again, I just don't get I would love I would love to be educated on why that can't happen, because I've seen the U.S. Green Berets, Navy SEALs. I've se well, I haven't seen I haven't been there on the ground, but you hear about them actually going out and finding the people They'll go into a town, guys suspected to be there. They don't just lay out everybody in the town. They go and find that guy. You know, Tim Kennedy, uh, you, you'll hear that story in a second here. Here's a little bit of breaking points. And I know, I know some of you are like, ew, breaking points. But they make some good points in this little clip that I'm going to show you. Here it is. The Atlantic would say those comments were extremist. Um, but Greg, Greg Abbott would say anti-Semitic. There you go. Many, and apparently Matt Miller would as well talk about that also in my uh, in my monologue. But I mean, he really, he really goes in. Apparently that video that uh, Al Jazeera obtained, the drone footage of them striking and killing these four unarmed civilians who were just walking along in Khan Yunus. I mean, it's it's horrible to watch. We played just a little bit of it. Um, but if you do watch the whole thing, you know, you see the initial drone strike. You see one of them at least, like, crawling uh, after being hit, initially wounded, and then hit again, and all of them killed. And, you know, you can't butt Hamas that. You can't, oh, human shield that. It's just so naked, and I, I think one of the things that people have reacted to so strongly, because I've been wrapping, uh, trying to wrap my head, Emily, around mm -hmm. why this video, this seems to have been the thing for Alex Jones. That's what he quote tweeted. It seems to have been, you mm -hmm. know, the thing for for Joe Rogan. And just judging by the the tenor of the commentary and the shift, you know, AOC then comes out shortly thereafter, uh, also calls it a genocide. I've been trying to wrap my head around what it was about this video, because we've seen so many horrors play out in front of our eyes. Mm. 
And I think it's the fact that all the typical justifications are null. You can't, like I said, you can't butt Hamas it. You can't, there's a tunnel there. You can't, mm. um, you know, it's anti-Semitic to say this. You, all the normal justifications are, they're not human shields, are kind of null and void. And then there's something so nightmarish and terrifying, um, Alex Jones called a robotic mass genocide, I believe, about the fact that they're walking along totally unawares. And then out of the sky, boom, it's over. And also the the David and Goliath nature of that. I mean, they're unarmed, they have nothing, right? And everything around them in the video too is complete rubble, as, as Rogan is saying, right? They're, look at Gaza, there's nothing left. Um, his guest there says, it's like Dresden. They're completely unarmed, they're completely vulnerable. And meanwhile, Israel has this, you know, incredibly high-tech killing technology, and that's what they're up against. And there's something about that video that marked a real turning point for the way a lot of people were viewing this conflict. So Alex Jones apparently has also been calling Rabbi Shmuley the butt plug rabbi? They had a debate. <laughs> He did. <laughs> yes, he did. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, interesting <laughs> enough. Well, the Rogan clip to me is is fascinating because he he goes back and says, listen, this is really recent history. Like the Holocaust is, is really recent history mm -hmm. in the living memory of many people. That's and right. the founding of modern Israel comes in uh, 1948. And what also happens there is, and Brian and I talked about this a little bit yesterday, but the uh, the, the new definitions or the formal uh, international agreement on what the definition of genocide is, because basically the UN comes together after World War II and says, we need to prevent you know, Dresden, we need to prevent the Holocaust, we need to, you know, all of that. And that living memory is also why, uh, you know, you see Netanyahu and other leaders in Israel, and even, by the way, some well-intentioned liberal Israelis um, feel the need to turn Gaza into a, quote, parking lot because mm -hmm. those threats remain you know, so ingrained in the minds. And that's what Rogan is reacting to and saying it's strange. It's a it's a strange like dissonance between, you know, saying we want to prevent another Holocaust and then seeing uh, the, the destruction of Gaza and calling for the destruction of Gaza, calling for it in the name of stopping another Holocaust to be turned into a parking lot. And I understand, you know, why that's why that hits home with people like Joe Rogan. I un completely understand the perspective of uh, being grossed out by the drone attacks and the sort of like, it, it, it is, this is a, a different kind, like since we have, since World War II, this is a, a new kind of conflict. Um, and, and I don't think the Netanyahu's and the Joe Biden's of the world were prepared for how the public was going to react to it. It's similar to other conflicts, like or high, like urban warfare, um, but Syria, other places, but it's it's different. Uh, it's, it's completely different. And I think they underestimated where the public would be uh, when watching this because, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just, these videos are, are tough. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Again, um, you just have to kind of put in drone strike. You know, if, you, if you're on X, even if you're not, you can still go there, um, not signed in. You can just put in drone strike Gaza and you'll see you'll see exactly what it was again it's not super gory but it is impactful because you understand what exactly happened those two people those four people no longer exist they're gone there's there's nothing to even have a funeral with like just gone so that's always terrible to hear and um again back to that first clip the fact that that guy and again these are two separate situations the guy at the beginning, the first clip that I showed you, the uh, spokesman, the Scottish Israeli guy, they're talking about a completely different thing. You know, uh, they're talking about a refugee camp getting hit because there is a commander in there. I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, you can say that there's human shields, but you do have to, at some point, you do have to face, you have to go face to face, I would think, in a war. And I shouldn't even say it. I, I would think I I'm I don't cover it a lot on this channel, but I'm constantly watching guys talk about war. I'm I'm infatuated with just listening to their war stories and what they go through and how it built their character and, you know, the type of person you have to be to endure through war. I'm always watching this stuff. 
these guys go face to face constantly and i'm going to play tim kennedy talking about that in a second but the one thing that jamie would not pull up was uh california uh deciding they decided the people of california decided no no they didn't all get shovels and start picking up human feces that's all over california they didn't do that no no they decided that it's time for there to be a ceasefire in gaza because they have the authority of zero so it was a very odd thing yeah again going back to the whole you know jordan peterson clean up your room they i think they even talked about that in the podcast you know like you got people everywhere you know your room's dirty you got people everywhere california i'm not saying don't worry about what's going on in other parts of the world but i'm also saying clean up a little bit you know what i mean here let's just play this to use this as an opportunity to bring our people on both sides of this divide together. Now at five, after a controversial meeting, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors has passed a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Meebeck. And I'm Julie Hayner. Hundreds of people showed up at that meeting. KTVU's Tori Gaines was inside. She joins us now live from City Hall with the details. Tori. Hi, Julie. The crowd here was loud. They were passionate. There was no public comment today, but that didn't keep everyone from making their voices heard. Supervisor Dean Preston even remarked that this is the largest group of passionate speakers he's seen um, since his time in office. He said that this group, uh, not as many, not, excuse me, other groups have not been nearly as committed as those who came out to speak about the resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. We've never seen this level of engagement um, and, and passion, and for people to wait five hours lined up outside this building and through our halls to come in to talk for one minute. The meeting room was tense Tuesday afternoon. Many supervisors were booed or cheered loudly after making points in relation to the ceasefire resolution. Board President Aaron Peskin announced that the language of the resolution had been amended again in a hope to find a consensus. I am offering amendments that turn this into a one-page resolution. Um, nowhere as is. Uh, we went down the road of reciprocity, Hamas did this, Israel did that, um, history that goes back either 75 years or goes back several thousand years. Uh, let's dispense with all of that. Supervisor Matt Dorsey hoped to add language to the resolution contemning the October 7th Hamas attack, but he faced criticism from supporters of the ceasefire. What haunts me as much as anything I have encountered in more than 20 years of working in this building is hearing the orchestrated denialism about what happened on October 7th. That is not worthy of the city of St. Francis, and it is not worthy of this board of supervisors. As observers outside of the meeting chanted ceasefire now, the board moved forward with a vote. In the end, the resolution passed with eight aye votes. Three no votes were heard. Supervisors Catherine Stephanie, Matt Dorsey, and Raphael Mandelman. Supporters of the resolution hope it will spur more change not only here in our city, but across the United States. I care about the future of this country and I care about the future of this world. And having a child has made that much more important to me. Because I want to lay a foundation for her when she's being, when she's raised in this country, or if she can be able to go back to her homeland in Palestine, that she's living in a world that is not filled with war, that she's living in a world where she could feel dignified. The Jewish Community Relations Council told KTVU after the vote today, quote, JCRC Bay Area is appreciative of the members of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors who listen to the Jewish community and work to develop a modified resolution. However, these changes do not take away from the trauma this process has spawned for the Jewish community and others who have been traumatized by the Israel-Hamas war. Now, the ceasefire resolution that was passed today, it calls for a sustained ceasefire a sustained ceasefire in Gaza, and at more humanitarian aid, a release of hostage, hostages. It also condemns anti-Semitic, anti anti-Palestinian, and Islamophobic rhetoric and attacks. And it was very clear throughout the room, everyone in the room is hoping for an end to the violence. They have no control. That's why it's so ridiculous. That's why Joe Rogan's like, oh, this is so, it's nonsense. It was nonsense. Listen, I feel... I feel for everybody. I'm sure those people are very sad. I'm sure some of them are Jewish. They're very upset. I'm sure some of them are, you know, for Palestine and they're very upset. But you're in California. 
you're not even you're not even a part of the UN. Like, nothing. Like you just. It was such an odd thing. I, when I looked this up, because he, because Rogan brought it up, I was like, "What is this?" You're just like, "Oh, you know, yeah." And you know what's really funny about this? Same people that want this ceasefire. I'm just being straight up right now. They don't see a problem with the border. Same people. Same people. Guaranteed. They're just like, "Nah, there's no problem at the border. No one's illegal. No people are illegal, man." I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. You know. I'm just saying. It's true. Those same people think there's nothing wrong with the border, and they think Biden's a brilliant guy. <laughs> I'm not saying there shouldn't be a ceasefire. I'm saying there should be a ceasefire, definitely. But me saying it and then expecting it to happen because I said it would be insane. That's all I'm saying. You know, <laughs> I'm just making a video here. At least I know. But here is a uh, here's a vote that should have a little more impact. This is the UN voting on a ceasefire um they're in favor of a humanitarian ceasefire in gaza un general assembly so as you can see everything that's green is in favor everything that's red is against and everything that is yellow is abstinent so just looking here it's a whole lot of green we can obviously see what happened here netherlands doesn't care germany doesn't care of course uh hungary not there there i should say they're not actually present. I shouldn't say that they don't care. They're not actually present. But some of them will not care. Ukraine as well. Who said no? Papua New Guinea, of course. Yeah, so there's a bunch of places that said no. Austria. Interesting. But there's a whole lot of green on the board. But I'm only showing you this video. So you can see how Israel reacted. <laughs> because the <laughs> Israel representative is there. I want you to see how he reacted to this. The General Assembly is now voting on draft resolution A stroke ES 10 stroke L27 entitled Protection of Civilians and Upholding uh, and Upholding Legal and Humanitarian Obligations. Will all delegations confirm that their votes are correctly reflected on the screen? The voting has been completed. And please lock the machine. Look at this guy. This guy's on his phone. He's just like, eh, you know, I'm here. You know, this candy crush. Very hard, this candy crush. Uh, uh. Uh, Evo, Melanie, what? Huh? Lo, what? No? Ceasefire? Oh, okay, whatever. Candy Crush, back to my game. Does He could care less. He's like, I know what we're doing. We're not just doing a ceasefire because you guys tell us to. So, that's that. That was, that was done about three months ago. So, that didn't actually take... Brief ceasefires always happen here and there in this conflict. Someone always breaches it. And honestly, I know, I know there's a lot of people that are pro-Palestine, but a lot of times it is not the civilians, but it is Hamas. They will breach a ceasefire. It only takes a little bit. You can fire one shot at the wrong, the wrong way and you've violated the ceasefire. And once they do that, Israel's just like, okay, no more ceasefire. And they just continue their military actions. So very, very interesting stuff. Uh, we're going to move on to Tim Kennedy because the reason I'm playing this story, this is from Sean Ryan. Sean Ryan sat down with Tim Kennedy recently. and He's telling a story that I've played before on the show, not this clip, but I've had Tim Kennedy talk about this before. And this is the point that I'm trying to illustrate. I don't see, I thought all war happened like this. I didn't. I don't, what war is there happening right now where you can just decide to take out whole city blocks and it's okay? Because a lot of people argue, well, Putin, Russia, but they're not allowed to do that. Uh, you know, there's a whole world that's standing up and saying, no, don't do this. Stop doing this, right? 
But even the, they're not really doing that. There's guys on the ground trying to find Ukraine forces, taking them out. There's Ukrainians trying to find Russia, Russian forces, taking them out. I've watched hours of videos of exactly what I'm talking about. So I don't understand why they can't do exactly what Tim Kennedy did. And as I'm saying that, it's also going to illustrate the fact that there are casualties in war and it is unavoidable. Let's get into it. Buddy as a sniper. Yeah, a lot. Did you kill anybody as a sniper? Yeah, a lot. Can we talk about the first one? Yeah, it's a bad one. It was sad. Like all war is. Um, I wish it was like, dude, I saw this dude squirt out of the back of the target. You know, he had like his head holding the head of a, of a baby on his shoulder. You know, and um, he's carrying an AK, and I see that he's wearing a VBID vest, and he's running towards an American unit, and I shot him. You know, uh, yeah. It was a child carrying a 1875 lever action British rifle, and he was moving in resupply points between uh, this Taliban machine gun position. And I saw him move a couple of times. Well, I didn't know how old he was. <clears throat> he's about five, 600 meters. There's like hours of limited visibility. So like I see a guy with a gun moving from like the far side of a hill to a machine gun position. It does it a couple of times. So the next time that I see him moving, I shot him. Very rarely do you get to go and see the people you shoot as a sniper. And uh, this was in our direction of travel. So as the caravan starts to move in that direction and I come and I see this 11, 12 year old kid with a rifle. Um, I actually, have you ever come to my office in Texas, in Austin? I have this gun hanging on my wall. Right underneath it is the CENTCOM permission from the JAG for me to bring. It's not a war trophy. They said it's not even functional. Um, and I also have U.S. Special Operations Command JAG authorizing me. And I have both of them, like the stamped approved, uh, mm -hmm. what were those like little squeeze things that put a permanent mark on the paper? Yeah. You know, with the JAG signature. Seal. Yeah, with their little pressure seal. Both of those things sitting right underneath there. And I, it reminds me of two things. One is every time I hear a politician say, like, why do you need a gun? Like, what is the importance of the Second Amendment? We have F-16s and F-18s and M1 Abrams. And I think back to in a little boy, a peasant, a nomad that had been kicking the American Special Operations ass in this valley for three days. And he's running around with an 1875 musket, one man with a rifle protecting his own land, how powerful he is and the power of the Second Amendment and how this insurmountable force of one, one good guy with a gun, how powerful that is. So that's one reason. And the second is to remind me of the cost of war. It's never the way that you want it to be. It's never the way that it is in the movies. It is horrible. It is young. It is pain. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want my son to ever have to shoot an 11 year old kid carrying a gun that doesn't even work. That's war. Um, everything else is for the movies. Does that still haunt you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's war. Yeah. Someday we'll have peace. We'll all live together. But until then, this is what war looks like. Uh, you can have these ideals and dreams of grandeur, but it's eviscerated bodies and burnt smell of hair and flesh and children that are raped and tortured and die from overpressure wounds and bad guys on the same, not but two days later from me shooting that kid, I throw a grenade through a window with a, a PKM machine gun, Mike Goble, hero. One of the greatest Green Berets to walk the face of the planet. Roy Benavidez level Green Beret. Mike and I, we always had like some friction. We had been in a couple of fights over some dumb stuff. He was in a machine gun position. He had a pistol out. I was like, why aren't you on your machine gun? He's like, well, I want a pistol kill. I was like, you're, you're a stupid idiot. And then we'd fist fight. Um, so like, <clears throat> fast forward to this Typical door. Typical Neanderthal conversation. 100%. <laughs> I put my hand on this door. 
all I know is like, I just start falling back and I'm like trying to get my feet because I'm going to come at him and knock his teeth through his face because he just shoved me because I thought he wanted to be the number one guy through the door. And as soon as he shoves me, it pushes him back and this door just gets shredded with machine gun fire and uh, saves my life. No, no question. Had I been there like a half a second later and Mike Goble not been there, I'd be dead. And uh, I see as this door like kind of starts swinging that there's a machine gun sticking out of this window. And I take a grenade. I throw this frag grenade through this window. Boom. What you want to hear is silence. You know, all I hear is women and children start screaming. This guy had barricaded himself and surrounded himself with a bunch of women and children in this room. And, uh, you know, this is two days after coming off this kid. You got a lot of Spartan stuff in here. Do you remember the plungers behind the line of the 300? So you'd have the guys in the front, the phalanx, right? The short stores and the spears. And they would move that line forward. Mm-hmm. And it's- So I just wanted uh, you guys to hear that part. You know, the reason that I play that part is because they're talking about the fact that he did end up hitting civilians. But they also, and I've heard this story many times from different podcasts from Tim Kennedy, but they also made sure to take all those people to an infirmary. You know, um, the children made it. I don't know about everybody else. There was some elderly in there, uh, elderly women, but the kids made it for the most part uh, in terms of, you know, made it, you know, forever traumatized, forever messed up after something like that. But they weren't looking to do that to the guy. And because the guy was barricaded with those people, they didn't take all those people out. They actually, the story goes on longer. He doesn't tell it in this podcast, but I know this story from him. They go and find that guy and then they take him out. And I just don't understand why that can't be happening in the Israel-Gaza conflict. There are clearly people in this conflict who need to be taken out. These members of Hamas, you know, especially the guys who did the horrendous acts, those guys need to be found and taken care of. But you need to find them. You can't just be like, he's in a building and we're just taking out the building. Hey, everybody, leave. Whoever doesn't leave, whatever, get them. You know, there's many times that 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 has happened with Tim Kennedy and other forces where somebody won't leave a house and they're like, you have to leave this house. And they'll get a translator, and translator will walk up and say, hey, you have to step out of here. There's a guy up there. You have to get out of here, or else you'll get hurt. And then they understand, or they don't. But either way, they either get forcibly removed, or they just move on their own will. And then they go in, and they handle the guy. I just I just don't see why that can't be happening in this conflict. And I'm glad that Joe Rogan's bringing it up to this extent, because, you know, when you see that video... Because I'm sure some of you have already gone to go look it up. It's it's messed up, man. It's messed up. And when you see the footage of Gaza, it's it's messed up. There there needs to be a better way of doing it. And again, war is always terrible. You know, a better way of war. It's like, but you know, you, you gotta. Tim Kennedy hit some casuals, but he wasn't looking to do that, and they weren't just doing that all around. They made sure to find the guys they were looking for. Tim Kennedy found the guys that they were looking for so much when he was sniping that the head of the terrorist organization that they were combating actually released a statement because somehow they figured out that it was him. And they said, we're coming after Tim Kennedy. Like he's not safe here and he's not safe when he's in the United States. They released like that's how that's how much they were going directly at their enemy. I don't know. I don't know. I just think that should be going on in that conflict as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm sure you will already. And um, other than that, I'm out. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And let me know what you think about what Rogan said. I'm out.